The People's Democratic Party in Kwara State has rejected the results of last Saturday's local government election released by the State Independent Electoral Commission. The party is alleging that the election was marred by irregularities, ballot snatching, harassment and intimidation of its members, and an open display of already stamped ballot papers in some polling booths. The state chairman of the party, Yolao Yedekpo, claims his party was denied victory in some local government areas where its candidates won convincingly. If these people are popular, why ballot, why snatching of ballot boxes? They have the government, they have the money, they have the power, they have the influence, and they are still snatching boxes. If they are popular, why the arrest of our people? That is the biggest question. They could have defeated us neat and clear, and everybody would have gone to his houses. But these people are now harassing people, intimidating people with the police and some other um, security agencies. Let's move to legal matters now. The president is asking members of the judiciary to come up with new strategies that would help fast track the dispensation of justice and aid the government's fight against corruption. President Mohamed Buhari was speaking at the opening session of the All Nigerian Judges Conference in Abuja, where he also lauded the request of the Chief Justice of Nigeria that all files of financial crimes, cases, and corruption be brought to her with a view to assigning them to special courts. The judges are discussing how to strengthen judicial integrity and the rule of law in Nigeria. In the meantime, the absence of Justice Bintan Yako, who is also attending the All Judges Conference in Abuja, has told the trial of IPOB leader Namdi Kanu for alleged treasonable felony. This is the second time the leader of the proscribed group, IPOB, will be absent in court after the alleged invasion of his home by the military on September the 14th. But his co-defendant and a serving senator, A. Naya Baribe, who is one of the three persons standing as sureties for the bill granted the IPOB leader, were in court. Kanu's leader, Ifai, lawyer, Ifai Ejiofo, told the judge on October the 17th that Kanu had been missing since soldiers allegedly invaded the IPOB leader's home. The trial will resume on December the 5th. We are I on the side of the prosecution. We are able, ready to go on with the, the case today. Case are adjourned today. Till the 5th of um, November. Today, we are here in court for the shortest to explain to the court actually where he is. And you are also aware by virtue of what transpired in this court, our last adjourned date being 17th of December, uh, some November, that I don't think that much will happen had it been the court even sit. So, because of the fact that um, the courts reserve the ruling on our application, asking the military to produce it in court. So, and the, until when that ruling is delivered, then we will not know what will happen next in the proceedings. Because uh, when we are saying that the military invaded his house, we supply court, they will supply the court with the material evidence and the documents to show that they actually invaded his house, killed people and arrested him. And at the time they invaded his premises and his home, he was in the house. And they alerted me about the, the onslaught, which I also quickly... Um, uh, issued a statement to that effect on the 14th day of uh, September 2017. So we have documents to show to the court that, look, this will enter his house on 14th of September 2017. And since then, we've not heard from him. We've not, we've not established any form of contact with him. So, and the uh, military has their way. They, they came here on a fishing expedition uh, because uh, they were telling the court that on the 14th day of September 2017 that uh, they intercepted a, a, a trolley load of uh, arms and ammunition and gave the trolley, the truck a, a hot chase. Eventually ended up in a home they never discovered to be in the Kano's home. That is a fairy tale, we told the court. And Justice Tuka Aliyu of the Kaduna State High Court has fixed December the 15th to hear the suit filed by the embattled former chairman of the Presidential Pension Reform Task Team, Abdul Rashid Maina, to stop the EFCC from arresting or prosecuting him. Mayna, through his lawyer, is challenging the power of the EFCC to declare him wanted or seize his properties in Kaduna and Abuja 
over allegations of corruption leveled against him by the anti-graft agency. In another suit, he filed at the Federal High Court, also in Kaduna State, against the EFCC, Attorney General of the Federation, the Senate President, and the Speaker of the House of Representatives. Mena is challenging the legality of the EFCC to declare him wanted on the grounds that the Commission lacks powers to exercise such functions. But the EFCC, in a counter-affidavit, opposing the motion, sought the relief of the court for an adjournment to enable them study the issues raised by the respondent and reply accordingly. The case has been adjourned till December the 15th. China is willing and desirous to come and appear in person to substantiate some of, some of these things. Most of these things we have been, we, you've been hearing us talk about are issues that we did not even get directly from him, but we have seen some documents and we are in a way, reasonable person, so we can read in between the lines. So we are making serious contacts, putting so much pressure on the family members to get in touch with him, to come back to this country, so that he can come and appear in person. Even without the injunction, you see that letter of invitation inviting him to come and appear before the Adwoke Committee is on its own a protection. But we don't want to do that. We have a next seat in our papers, and then we are asking for an order of the court stopping all these people from arresting him so that he can now come, say whatever he knows, because it's the public, I keep on telling you, our concern is these things, money, these assets, where are they? Is it true? I hope he's not telling us lie. Away from the courts in Katsina State, the government is making efforts to keep youths off the streets and get them engaged. The strategy that being adopted is to encourage patrons to establish more businesses that will accommodate the teeming youth population. Government authorities say the move is in reaction to recent concerns about the abuse of drugs by youths in the northern region. This is a gathering of stakeholders from the academia and professional groups in Castina State. They are gathered to discuss the problem of youth restiveness, violence and drug abuse in the state. The secretary to the state government is of the opinion that the genesis of the problem is from the home where many Nigerians fail to have the number of children they can cater for. We produce children that we cannot maintain, especially in the lower level people. Some few days ago in my office, we are discussing with some people. We come to realize six people in my office, six, six have 102 children. Six, 102. And all of them are 15 years down. And no one of them, Mama. So we really have to look at the society and see, it's not just to provide education. In addressing the challenges of youth restiveness, violence and drug abuse, some resource persons who spoke to channels television prefer solutions to the problems. In a situation where the same characters are being recycled in governance, then you are likely to have a problem like this one. Therefore, we, feel, we believe one way of ensuring that youth restiveness is reduced is to, to discuss their problem and see how to address their problem. And one way of solving the problem is to ensure they are included in the scheme of things in our country. So one of the key uh, uh, addresses in the paper is uh, for uh, government and the community to upgrade the current elementary schools into good formal schools and declare basic education compulsory, even as it is free in Kassana State. In that way, all parents will be compelled to send their children to school. We have explained how this could be done at very little cost. For instance, in, by, through collaborating with the local education authorities to identify some key primary schools as Arabic primary schools, uh, where parents who so feel strongly about it could send their children. These participants believe that platforms such as these are crucial in getting concerned Nigerians to discuss these lingering problems and prefer solutions. 
but a one that government at all levels need to demonstrate political will in addressing the challenges of drug abuse, violence and youth restiveness in the country.